Now, you've published quite a few papers with development over the years. Why do you choose to publish with development? Well, I like to publish in development um, partly because I trust and respect the journal. I mean, it's a journal that has consistently published papers of outstanding quality, and, and I know that if I can make it in there, that you know, I'll hopefully be part of that, of that level of trust and quality. Okay, so when you're not submitting your own work, what do you actually do at development? What does your job as a development editor entail? Right, so as an editor, I handle the papers that come in. I get assigned uh, manuscripts. Either the authors select me or I get selected by the staff at development. And then I choose the reviewers, um, send them out for review, and then evaluate the reviewers' recommendations and make a decision based on that. And what kind of papers would you like to see more of in development? New approaches and techniques with genome editing, with epigenomic analysis and sequencing-based approaches, there's really an opportunity to dive deep into development and not just limited to uh, genetic organisms that are, that are familiar to most. Um, the other thing I'd really like to see is more papers on human development. There's with iPS cells and organoids, there's an incredible opportunity to study human development, compare it to um, other vertebrates or mouse development, and really gain an understanding of not just human development, but human developmental defects. So as an editor, you must see lots of papers coming through. Can you tell me what makes a development paper stand out? A development paper really is a paper that has some extraordinary solid science that you can tell is going to move that field forward, that is not going to um, necessarily bring just some minutiae, but is really going to add depth to a particular field. So development and gene before it has been around for longer than you've been alive. As a journal, do you think there's a certain amount of respect that comes with age? Yeah, there's definitely a tremendous amount of respect that comes with the staying power of development. Um, when I was a graduate student, I read papers that, that I still refer to now, and there's papers that were published 20 years ago that are still being cited these days and have accumulated you know, thousands of, of, of citations. The, uh, the staying power of development is, is I think, one of, its, one of its assets. We really do publish papers that stand the test of time um, and continue to be influential, as you, as you point out, generations after they've, they've been published. From what I can tell, you're a big fan of Twitter. Do you tweet every day? and How do you find time for this? Yeah, Twitter's uh, been really interesting. It's, I, I learn a lot from it. Uh, how do I find time for it is really mostly in idle moments, you know, wait, waiting in line at the grocery store at my uh, son's soccer game. Um, and then sometimes you know, it's nice to just take a break from, from work and, and find out what's going on in the world, in either the science world or the world of, of politics. So I somehow find the time. And you've got over 2,500 followers on Twitter. Why do you think people are so interested in you? <laughs> so 2,500 followers. Yeah, I, I, I fail to understand that as well. Um, I think it probably has to do, it's a combination of uh, sending out messages about science that people are interested in. A bit of humor helps, and it's really refreshing to be able to interact with such a broad range of people. And so, so I think it's probably that, that richness of interactions that builds a, a group of followers quickly. And have you ever tweeted anything that you've come to regret later? No, I think I've, I've enjoyed the, the medium and uh, I think behaved myself.